Hello, welcome to the Drexel University Health Sciences Library's PubMed Clinical Queries Search. We're currently viewing the Health Sciences Library's website. Although PubMed is a freely accessible resource, I would suggest to the Drexel community to utilize the link located underneath the Quick Link section in the bottom left hand portion of the screen to enter. PubMed. I'll click that now. By doing so, you'll identify yourself as being part of Drexel University and there will be links to material subscribed to through the university. In this search, we're only going to look for evidence-based information. To help us locate that information, we'll use the Clinical Queries link. I'll click on that now. Performing a search in clinical queries allows us to find case studies, cohort studies, randomized controlled trials, systematic reviews, and meta-analyses. To perform a search, simply click into the box above and enter in your search terms. For this tutorial, we'll be using this specific clinical question. Susie, the mother of a two-year-old child with asthma, is concerned about the upcoming cold and flu season. She's interested in having her child receive the influenza vaccine, but she's afraid that the vaccine could trigger her daughter's asthma. What does the current available evidence suggest? Now we're back in the clinical query search. If I was to translate that question into search terms, I would list it as such. Asthma and influenza vaccine. This database is rather large, so I'm going to be as specific as possible, and I also need to use Boolean logic terms like AND or OR. I find it helpful to type those commands in caps. That way it's easy to see your search terms and it's easy for the system to understand what the command portions of your search phrase are. From here, I'll hit the search button. It will pull back initial results using the therapy category. However, there are a few different categories that are available. And in this particular case, we're dealing with a situation that involves risk. So I would suggest using the etiology category. We've currently left this as a broad setting, but you can vacillate between a broad and narrow setting here for the scope. Narrow will bring back less information, but many of those articles will be more on target, so to speak. However, there's a chance that you could miss something really relevant. It does happen. I'll leave this broad at the moment, but I'll also point out if you're specifically looking for a systematic review, that information will be listed here in the center of the page. If we wanted to look at all of the evidence-based information from case studies up through meta-analyses, we could examine the see all link here, all the way towards the bottom left. I'll click that now. That will display the results of our search. And if we wanted to, we could go further and add limits. The limits section is located towards the top of the screen. I'll click that now. At this point, we could use publication date. In this case, I'll use the last five years. I'll also check English language, humans underneath species, and in this case, I'll put in an age range. The patient in question is two years old, 
So I'll select the 2 to 5 limit here. I'll now hit the search button located at the very bottom of the screen. It'll apply those limits to our search and makes it much more compact. One small suggestion, I'll frequently use the display settings located here towards the upper left. If you do that, Please try abstract mode. By using abstract mode, this will configure the information on the screen to also include the article summary or abstract. We'll also see the Drexel Get It buttons, which allow users to discover if Drexel has the full text available for this particular journal article. If that information is not available online, there is also a link for the ILLiad or our interlibrary loan service. This concludes the video tutorial. Thank you.